The People's Democratic Movement was in power at that time, right? Uh, and Wendell Swan was Minister of Social Services. And so he was tasked with looking at the introduction of a, a national insurance system. The NIB wasn't just to be a pension system. Actually, the more important focus uh, was to create a source of funds to develop Turks and Caicos Islanders. Uh, the idea was particularly uh, concerned with housing. Uh, and when we initially made the um, feasibility study, uh, the idea was to create the National Insurance Scheme the Housing Corporation and the National Development Bank. The person that headed up the project was Mr. Demetrius Pelicanos from, from Cyprus. Uh, we had an electronic uh, person or a, a computer person from uh, Newcastle, England, uh, Harry Grubby, and we had a actuarial person from Italy, Gio Giovanna Ferrari. Uh, and so those three persons, along with myself, uh, we were considered the team in terms of the introduction, the possible introduction of the national insurance system. Back in 1990, uh, there were serious deficiencies in the, in the government finance. But by 1990, we had already moved uh, toward developing the national insurance program. So it wasn't a response to the, to the dire financial circumstances that we started it. Uh, but as you can imagine, back in 1988-89, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of capital for, uh, for Turks and Caicos Islanders to, uh, to access, to, to develop the Turks and Caicos Islands. And that's where the impetus came from. To, uh, to develop the scheme together with the other two institutions that I mentioned. We began the process. The, our first office was located on Church Folly in the Franklin Music Building. Uh, uh, we engaged a secretary, which was Eileen Bean at the time, because there was a tremendous amount of work to do. You know, we didn't have the level of automation that we currently have. And so Ms. Bean was responsible for the typing of the legislation and, and the typing of the regulations uh, and so forth. And, and so we, we had one year to do everything in, to get everything done. And I know that was going to happen because of the project leader, uh, Mr. Pelicanus. He, he was one of those types of persons. And so uh, um, uh, we, we began the process by dealing with the legislation first. Just before uh, we went to Parliament uh, to present the legislation to Parliament, the bill to Parliament, and, and to do all the necessary readings and, 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 and so forth and to get it turned into law. The PDM lost the election uh, to the Progressive National Party. Uh, Washington Mizek was the leader uh, at that time, the, the chief minister. Michael Eugene Mizek was uh, assigned the task of being the, the minister responsible uh, for, for national insurance. And so he, he had the privilege of taking the legislation or taking the bill to Parliament. At the time, there was a lot of uh, uh, resistance to some extent because it was the first time that there was some form of, uh, uh, where, where the public had, had to make some form of direct payment um, for a benefit um, you know, before people would pay customs duties or uh, other, other form of um, bad, you know, bad tax. But to have a, a scheme where money was being deducted from your salary was something that was not uh, uh, readily accepted. There were a number of individuals um, who uh, thought that they were entitled to certain benefits. And it was a gray area in, in the ordinance in terms of whether they qualified or didn't. And also at the time, uh, there were a number of persons protesting uh, national insurance. They were picketing outside of the National Insurance Office in Providenciales and I made a concerted effort together with uh, the board and uh, management team to have those issues addressed. They, the populace didn't 
know exactly what national insurance was all about. So a considerable amount of time was spent trying to bring awareness to the populace as to what their benefits were. They were paying into the scheme that they didn't understand. It was new and up and coming. Uh, so a considerable amount of challenges were there. They felt that they were not benefiting from, from the program. And so I think we had to go on a public relations program to let them know that everybody would benefit from, from NIB. Change is not always very easy. People do not accept change. And I think the National Insurance Board is one of those institutions um, that reflect that. Because back in 1992, when the National Insurance Board was established, people were not accepting of it. You know, people, uh, they, they, they felt that, you know, I didn't want government or anybody else taking any wages out of my, you know, any money from my wages. And, and they could not see the benefit at the time. And so over the last 20 odd years, people have come to recognize that that, that was really a, a safety net for them for the future. And so, you know, being cognizant of that, you know, my, my attitude was they will adapt. They will see that this is for their benefit. Although I, am, I was a pastor then, but I was pretty negative to Mr. Gardner in response to him coming to me and trying to get me to understand the importance of it. To me, he was my enemy. <laughs> but now he is my best friend, and I will tell you how he become my best friend. Uh, he came to me one day, he said, Mr. Talbot, say, I'll tell you what I can do for you. If you don't want to pay your national insurance, I'm going to take you to court. Your national insurance is up to $3,000, and I'm going to take you to court and you can pay for that and one day you'll appreciate why I do it. That was the first time that mandatory deductions to employees' paychecks were being implemented. And so we received strong opposition from both the employees and the employers. One of the hardest things for me to do was to pay that $3,000. That was hard. Only, only left for tears to come at my eyes. <laughs> but it was, I wanted to avoid going to court. Uh, you know, I had some pride about myself and dignity. And I said to myself, you know, I let myself down, but I just can pay the money. Uh, they looked at it as an additional expenditure that they were not prepared to place on their organizations. And we received a lot of opposition from the employers. Um, persons lobbied government. Petitions were sent to the government to delay the implementation of the National Insurance Program for a year or two and uh, for a brief period, the National Insurance Program was in limbo. At the very beginning, even me myself, even though I voted for it, I had my reservations about it because it came at a time when we were on the ebb. Things weren't all that good. and. Um, jobs were scarce and uh, as a result you know people were, were, pay, were paying into the scheme they weren't doing happily until the first benefits started to come out then I think it was that 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 became the turning point for the populace to say look this is something good I'm happy that I had that because after my husband died I left with nothing much, you know, because I was not working and whatever I used to have, it was nothing much. I was, it was helpful while I was doing God's work to know that every month I have something. The benefits was not only pertaining to me, my family. Government is responsible for social programs. They have a social responsibility to the general population, especially to those who are below the poverty line, the elderly, the indigent, and national insurance uh, fills that void. So the establishment of such a scheme whereby those who are better off are able to pay into it to help subsidize some of the social programs that government is responsible for 
I think that national insurance is an ideal entity to address that. In the past, you had people who work all their life um, and they become at an, at an old age and they were not able to, to get anything. They had to rely solely on, on, on the uh, on charity or, or on, on the kids or family members. But with the coming to being of national insurance scheme, um, if you contribute, you pay. You get a benefit at the end of your retirement or at the beginning of your retirement. But even more importantly, uh, those older folks who, uh, who had not contributed, immediately they would get what, what was considered a non-contributory pension. And so uh, to see the joy on, on the faces of so many older, older folks who was relying on others, now they can at least know that they will get a minimum amount of money per month that they can you know, pay the electrical bill, buy food, etc. When I went to the United Nations uh, to seek assistance in, in, in setting up the, the program, there was no thought of me ever benefiting from the program. Uh, however, I, I can say that um, next month I reach retirement age and, and can then start to collect my pension from national insurance. The NIB is actually the friend of all contributors throughout the Turks and Caicos Islands. We provide that social safety net for persons through your pensions, through your benefits. You get sick, we're there for you. You, you become an invalid, we're there for you. And if you, you, um, if you sustain some kind of employment injury, the National Insurance Board is there for you as well. I, I, I must say that I'm very uh, proud and, uh, of uh, to have been involved with the establishment of the National Insurance Board. I think it's one of the, the greatest accomplishments uh, that uh, I've been involved in as a politician, as a minister, and certainly one of the PNP's uh, uh, greatest accomplishments in, in establishing, having the, the, the foresight to establish the National Insurance uh, Board. Uh, when we came into office, that the fund was in the region of about, I think, between 50, 50 to 60 million dollars. And then by 2009, it had increased to about $100 million. So um, the fund has had a good run. In terms of investment, um, you had some sectors of the com community that felt that the, the funds should have been invested locally, whereas you also had certain sectors that felt that it should be invested overseas. So the, the way how we went about trying to balance um, the investment of the fund was, was also a major challenge. Always bear in mind that it is the people's money. We pay into the scheme, not for one to do anything with it, except to invest and guarantee returns on those investments. So my, my advice would be to always exercise prudence, and caution when it comes to investing in the people's money. If you are in the Turks and Caicos Islands and understand the economy of the Turks and Caicos Islands, you would quickly realize that you cannot invest the entire national insurance fund within the country. That is not a sensible and prudent strategy for any administration or any management group within the national insurance or within government for that matter uh, to insist upon. And um, countries big or small, they generally tend to tap into the international markets, whether they be in London, whether they be in New York, uh, uh, in other parts of Europe, and um, in some cases even in the South American territory. So uh, I think that uh, as a government you owe the public an explanation. Uh, as to why you approach a certain strategy with the uh, fund. Well, if Turks and Caicos Island is going to going to going to be in business, it's going to be a startup. So that very fact says you you're, ex you're excluding Turks and Caicos Islanders. We need to change that. Uh, okay, the, the the fund need to be protected from uh, from extraordinary risk. Everybody understands that. But, um, but if the opportunity came along, for example, um, for me to buy um, 
something that's been existing for the last 14 years. It's still a startup as far as I'm concerned. And, and, and the policy says that's a no-no. So I can't access that. So then whatever that opportunity is, goes to somebody else. So I think the board needs to look very seriously at that. Perhaps maybe the minister needs to look at that and, uh, and, 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 and get a policy that, that really allows us to access the fund. I think that the National Insurance Board should do even more in developing the Turks and Caicos Islands. Um, we have um, paid out benefits over the years um, since we've been uh, established in 1992. I think um, the payout is, has been in terms of benefits somewhere close to 140 million dollars over the past 25 years. This is very extraordinary for such a small country. Now, what I would like to see the National Insurance Board do is to do even more in terms of the local development, participate more in the local economy. And uh, we are um, actively looking for good domestic investments so that we can play a more central, a more important role in the development of the Turks and Caicos Islands. There has now been a complete buy-in uh, in the community on all sides of the political spectrum. And that was key. And, and I think as we continue to evolve in the society and be mature socially and politically, I think we're going to have to come to the realization that uh, governments are going to have to implement certain programs or certain institutions if we want to build towards one day becoming an independent Turks and Caicos Islands. I can remember when we actually increased the um, non-contributory old age pension from I think 200 to 300 dollars a month. Um, we um, also had, as I said, the opening of the NGS Francis building, which was a proud moment for us. But I would say that maybe the proudest moment for me during my tenure was when we hosted the first um, annual NHI financing con conference here in Providencialis. Um, we had, I think, about uh, 15 or 20 countries that participated in that conference. And based on that, a number of um, organizations and countries decided to implement an NHI program. Um, NIB here um, funded the first two years of the NHI pro um, program, and which eventually um, um, ended in the NHI program being started in 2009. But all of that had an impetus in the conference that was held in 2006 in September. One of the, the shining examples of, of uh, an institution that, that was you know, started here, built here, and, and, I'm, and I'm proud uh, that, uh, to say that um, 25 years later that um, it's most of the, the people that, that uh, work in the National Insurance Scheme is Turks and Caicos Islanders. We started off that way. Um, I think I appointed Trevor, the first director of National Insurance in 1992, and I appointed uh, Walter Gardner, the deputy director. Uh, at that same time, and 25 years later, I'm, I'm pleased that, that uh, Walter is now the director of National Insurance, and the scheme is growing from strength to strength. We've gone from like about 150 some million to over 200 million dollars. Uh, we have cut our administrative costs, all in an effort to ensure the sustainability of the fund. And and I think the the, the phenomenal growth that we have seen in the National Insurance Board, the care that has, that has been exercised. And, and, and sometimes I think if persons could witness the, the passion that those who are responsible for the National Insurance Fund, if they could witness that, they will be assured that, look, my best interests are indeed paramount to those who have been entrusted with the fiduciary responsibility of the National Insurance Fund. When I visit the hospitals um, or I see someone who is sick and I know for a fact that that person is receiving a sickness benefit from us, that makes me proud. When I see a young mother, a pregnant mother, um, getting ready to have a baby, being prepared to have a baby, I say to myself, wow, we're helping that, that, that mother. We're helping that, that baby um, by providing maternity allowance, uh, maternity grant. Um, that um, mother is going to be off for 14 weeks and going to be receiving 60% of the, 
from us. Uh, when I see persons who are elderly and um, receiving the non-contributory old age pension, it makes me proud. When I see persons who have retired from their jobs, and I know that we are taking care of them, some 1,200 persons today, um, that makes me proud. I think the National Insurance Board uh, deserve, and the, and the management and the staff deserve our most gratuitous thanks for the work that they have done. And so, uh, witnessing, having witnessed 25 years of this, I can only hope that you'll be around for, the board will be around for another 25 years and another 25 years, some place, some avenue where future generations can feel a sense of comfort that they have a place to go after they have made their contributions. And so on that note, I'd like to say happy anniversary to the National Insurance Board for 25 years. I wish the National Insurance Board all the best for the future. I wish to say to NID, happy 25th anniversary. I wish you all the best. Happy 25th anniversary, NID. We wish you and your staff all the best. It's really amazing that 25 years uh, have gone so quickly. Um, uh, and here we are 25 years after actually having national insurance in existence. Uh, and so I, I'm happy to, to wish the national insurance program uh, well in the future. Happy 25th anniversary of National Insurance. Uh, I wish you all the best. Grow, to, grow from strength to strength and make trucks and cakes proud. I want to wish you happy 25th anniversary and I want to wish you many, many more years, uh, especially when in terms of the good things that you're doing. Keep up the good work. All the best to the staff and the management and the board of directors of NIB. And let's shoot for another 25 years. Happy 25th anniversary. National Insurance Board. Happy 25th anniversary! Well, it is indeed a privilege to be around on this 25th anniversary of the scheme. I wish the director, members of the National Insurance Board, every good wish into the future. And uh, I might not be around, I won't be around for the next 25 years, but do enjoy this one while I'm here so I could be a part of it. Happy 25th anniversary to my staff of the National Insurance Board. I want to thank all of you for your hard work, your dedication, your sacrifice for the people of the Turks and Caicos Islands. I want to thank you for serving us, um, providing excellent, exceptional service over the past 25 years and being the leader in social insurance protection for the Turks and Caicos Islands. 